Thank you so much for watching today with Marilyn and Sarah. Oh my goodness, God has some really, really great things for you today. I was praying about our time together and God dropped a verse in my heart for you. And it's one of my favorite verses. It's Psalms 55 verse 22. It says, cast your cares on the Lord because he cares for you. And if you're like me, there's oftentimes things that are running around in our minds that make us nervous, make us worried, make us uptight and, and all kinds of stuff. I mean, you've got pressures from work, pressures from school, financial pressures, health pressures, all kinds of issues that can really, if we're not careful, they can occupy our mind and our thoughts and in some respects distract us from hearing from God. So hop on the phone, get on the website. We wanna pray for you that God would help you to cast your cares on the Lord. Now, if you get on the phone, they're not going to counsel you, but they'll pray for you. So they're not gonna take lots and lots of time, but they'll pray for you that God would help you to cast your cares on the Lord. And really that's so important for us because when we do that, we put cares in the hands of the Creator and God can handle your cares better than you or I can. That's absolutely the truth. And in our better moments, we know that. So let's not take those back into our hands, back into our mind, into our thinking and worrying, but let's let God take care of those things. Let's let God be the author, the finisher, the perfecter of our faith by keeping our cares in God's hands and trusting God to work on our behalf. So pick up the phone or get on the website. We'd love to pray for you to help, help you, that God would help you to cast your cares on the Lord. And in just a few moments, uh, we're going to be joining a teaching that my mom has done, a very powerful teaching called The Place of Success. Now here's the truth of it. You and I, <laughs> we want success. We don't set out in our lives to fail, to do average, to be mediocre. We want success. I want to be successful with my children. I want to be successful in my job. If you're going to school, of course, you want to be successful in school. We all want to have success in our lives. And this teaching with mom is going to be extremely powerful. I love, I looked at it and I remember that when she taught it here in our church as a really helpful, insightful teaching and giving you some very practical keys on walking in success for your daily living. I love the word of God. I love what God's word does because really it is the place of success. If you want to succeed, you can take the promises and that's the place of success. When I look at the Word and what it has done through the years in my life, I started reading the Word when I was 10. I wasn't saved, but I just had a hunger to read the Bible. I'm now 81, so for 71 years I have been living on God's Word. And I have found no matter what, if you'll take the Word, you'll come out winning. And sometimes that's very hard. And you know, you think, well, yeah, you're, you're good, you're successful now, and uh, you travel, you do all these things. But let me tell you, when Wally and I started, we had $15 one time, and we, that was our gas money to go to Gunnison to hold a revival. And so we went to a revival, and he gave the money away. And so I didn't know he gave it all. I thought maybe he gave $5, and we could make it on 10 But he gave 15 so we get up in the morning to drive to Gunnison, and he said, uh, I don't know how to tell you this, but we don't have any money for gas. I said, what? I, I know we had at least 10. He said, no, I put all 15 in. God told me to. I thought, I don't think that's God. <laughs> and so in that timing, Wally said to me, well, God will supply all our needs. Let's just start out. We'll go tell your parents goodbye, but don't you tell them we need money for gas. So we went by uh, my parents, and the phone rang, and it was a neighbor from where we lived, and she's crying. She said, I don't know what it is. I know you probably don't have a need for it, but God told me to give you $15. I'm driving over. I thought, God told you the right thing. <laughs> and so I can tell you, year by year, you know, step by step, it was the word that brought us through. And it's the word that will bring you through this morning. And if you're watching on television, I want you above everything else to get hooked on the book. Now, let's just look at some wonderful things God has given us. If you look in your notes, and those of you, I wanna give you the scripture reference who are watching, John 1:14 says, the word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. 
Now where it says the word became flesh, it means he pitched his tent. So I know you think, why do you have a tent up there? Because Jesus became flesh, and a tent is a temporary thing. To get into this tent, I would really have to humble myself, right? Because when you get into a tent, it's just temporary because you're going to travel someplace, and, and that's the convenient thing for you to do. Camping out, that's the way we think of a tent. But then also, I have to humble myself to get into it. And so when we begin to get into the Word, we have to humble ourselves and know that God's Word is bigger than our brain cells and our circumstance. And so it humbles me to take the promises and to make them my covering for the situation and the circumstance. So this morning, I want you just to get hooked on the book. So stand up. It says, it's a cold morning. Do we have to get up? Oh, yeah. Helps your circulation. Put your hand on your heart. Say, I have to humble myself and believe that God's Word will work in my life. Amen. All right, you can be seated. So we see that Jesus came in a tent, and He is the Word made flesh. It was temporary, 33 years, but he arose from the dead, sits at the right hand of the Father, and ever lives to intercede for you and me. Now, when I look at John 1, 12, and John is so, has so much emphasis, this gospel, on the word. But as many as received him, to them gave he the right to become the children of God to those who believe in his name. Now, it says he really esteemed his word above his name. But we have his name and we have the word. Everybody say his name and the word. And the Bible says in John 15, 7, if you abide in me and my word. So we abide in him, Jesus, his name, and we abide in his word, which means it's our lifestyle. We live in it. It's not just a shot in the dark when we're in trouble. But it's something we are living in. It's a part of our lives. Now, the Israelites did something that I think is very, very interesting. They lived in tents for 40 years. 40 years. And those tents became very important to them. And God set it up that they should keep reminding themselves of their tent living and we have the Feast of Tabernacles, and Jewish people celebrate it today. We used to live uh, by Jewish neighbors. We had wonderful neighbors. But at the Feast of Tabernacles, we would see tent, a big tent in their backyard, and literally they slept in it. They had two adopted sons, and they slept in it. So, and I've been to Israel and been in rabbis' homes at Tabernacles, and they have a tabernacle. They had a big kind of a porch, and they had a tabernacle, a tent set up. And you think, well, why is that so important that we tent in his provision? Because let's think of the 40 years. Did they have a food bill? No. Was it healthy food? Were they sick? That's pretty good living in a tent, wouldn't you say? Did they have a water bill? No, they, the rock that followed them was Christ. They had water. Okay, let's talk about nighttime. It's cold in the desert. They were in the desert. But he came as a pillar of fire, so he warmed them. But in the daytime, it's hot in the desert. So what did he do? He came as a pillar of cloud. Now, did they have to worry about fashion? No, there was no place to buy clothes. But did their clothes wear out? Did their shoes wear out? So they had a 40-year vacation. And what did they live in? His Word. His Word took care of them. And so they celebrate that the Word of God meets us in every level of our life. But again, the Word, there's a lot of Word because we have 39 books of the Old Testament 27 books of the New Testament, so you can't say, well, I'm wearing it out. I doubt that you are. 
So we have lots of word. Put your hand on your heart. Say, I won't forget. We have lots of word. Now, this is a very interesting thing. He says, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there he is in the midst of them. So you can get other people to come under the promises of God too. So you notice it says two or three. That's kind of tent living. So what you have of the word, other people can come in and share those promises with you, and they work very well. I have a good friend. Uh, she lives in Indonesia. She's very, very brilliant, has several master's degrees, actually was an atheist. I don't think uh, she was uh, a Muslim. Indonesia is the biggest Muslim country in the world. But she was living with the richest man in India. And so one morning he got up and he said, you know, I'm a backslidden Christian. There's a little Assembly of God church over here. I just feel like I'd like to go. Would you like to go with me? Now, watch it. She said, well, I've never been in a church. I don't know what a church is. So he said, well, go with me. And, you know, in Indonesia, they can't put up a cross, so it's just a building. And so she went to the church, and the pastor began to preach about Jesus, how he came in the flesh, how he died for our sins, how he arose from the dead. And she had the most unusual experience of the glory of God, rushed forward to receive Jesus and saw the resurrected Christ. She was so transformed and so changed, and he was so sorry he took her to church <laughs> because she moved out, she moved out, and uh, she now has a lot of big churches, and for a woman to have big churches in Indonesia is a big thing, but she has also a lot of big apartment buildings. She really prosperous. And so folks, when we invite people to come under the word and to he the hearing of the word, you don't know what transformation comes because the word is spirit and life. You know, I'm going to show you five things the word will do for you this morning and we're literally going to do them because the word has such power. But if we don't use it, you know, and it just collects dust, hey, but if you crack it, and you get into the word habit, I'm telling you, you get hooked on the book, you will be hooked on success. The, the key to your success is your Bible. Hold it up again. Say, the key to my success is my Bible. And so it's very, very important that we see that, that we can be a success in finances, we can be a success in health, we can be a success in relationships. We can have success in our family. This is the key. Now, let's see a little more of how to use the key. I found out God always wants to be where we are. He always wants to be where we are. So when his people lived in tents, he said, oh, I want to be with you, so build me a tabernacle. What's a tabernacle? Just a big tent. Because he said, if you live in a tent, I want to be with you. And they put that tabernacle right in the center of their encampment. Wow, I want to be in a tent. Well, then when they went into the promised land, if you remember, David wanted to build God a temple. And so he said, okay, I'll let your son Solomon build it. But he said something so beautiful to David. He said, I don't want you to build me a house. I'm going to build you a house. And so the house of David has never ended. God wants to be where we are. So when they had houses to live in, then he let them build him a temple to live in. Jesus dwelt among us to show us how to live freely and abundantly according to his word. Today we have the living word to direct and guide us daily. Do you long for a deeper spiritual life? The Word has everything you need to succeed and achieve breakthrough in every area of your life. For a gift of $25 or more, you'll receive Maryland's CD teaching, The Place of Success. Discover how you can create a life of fulfillment through the Word of God. Use the power of the Word to cleanse your soul, create miracles in your life, and find healing for your body and emotions. You'll also receive God's promises for your every need. Wrapped in a lovely leather-bound cover. 
This powerful book is full of promises that will help you overcome life's challenges. This resource topically arranges specific scriptures to offer you hope and encouragement during difficult seasons. Discover the healing power that lies in the Word. Call or click today. In the New Testament, he said, you know, I'd like to get more intimate. I, I don't want to just live in a tent with you. I don't want to live in a temple with you. I want to live in you. Amen. How intimate can you be? Christ in us, the hope of glory. How many of you have Jesus in you? Stand up. Let's just rejoice in that. Say, thank God. I have Jesus in me. He lives in me. He will never leave me nor forsake me. Amen. And so the living Christ, the living word comes in us. You can be seated. Now, you know, I like to witness to people. And overseas, you have a lot of opportunity. And so we had a guide in Greece. And uh, he goes to a, uh, an Orthodox church. So I said to him, I said, you know, Mary had other children than Jesus. Jesus is virgin born, but she had other children. Oh, whoever told you that? Well, I said, the Bible. He had half brothers. You know, some of them wrote books of the Bible, like James and like Jude. He said, that's not in the Bible. I said, do you read the Bible? No. Only the priest can read the Bible. How sad. How can you get under the tent if you can't read the Bible? So I said, if I send you a Bible, will you read it? Yes. Put your hand on your heart. He did. No, you don't have to. <laughs> put your hand, I said, put your hand on your heart. He said, Marilyn, send me a Bible, and I will read it. So I sent him one, prayed over it, that he just gets hooked on the book. Why? Because that's his covering. That's his place of success. And when people say to you, don't read the Bible, you can't understand it. Well, folks, if Jesus is inside you and he's the author of the book, can't he lead you to truth? Why would he tell you to read it if you, if you say, well, I don't understand everything? Well, I don't either. But the Bible blesses me for reading it. Amen. And so we look at that and think, oh, oh, oh. We have Jesus inside. We have the power of the Holy Spirit to understand the Bible. Now, if you're watching and you, you don't read the Bible, why don't you call us and let us pray with you that you would have a hunger for the Word of God. Folks, that's the big thing. And I've noticed this. The more you read the, the Word, the more you want to read it. The less you read it, the less you want to read it. It's the habit. Everybody say the habit. And so it's very, very important. And uh, there's a young man that's been coming to our church that got born again and spirit-filled. So uh, I gave him a Jesus Calling, which is a daily devotional. And so I would check with him, you know, are you reading the Bible? You know, how are you doing? And then he told me one day, oh, I read this devotional every day. You know, and it has scripture in it. But I said, you're not reading the Bible? No, am I supposed to? And so I said, you must read two chapters a day. You must. And so he said, okay, I must. I love what he said. So I check up on him. How are you doing with your Bible reading? Oh, I'm doing it, Marilyn. I'm doing it. But what's going to happen to him? What's going to happen? 
the habit, having the word refresh you and encourage you and transform you, like it transformed that wonderful Indonesian businesswoman. Total transformation. The more word you get, the more changed you get. The more transformation. All right, now I'm going to go to the, I love these five points. These next five points of what the word can do. Now, you know, I could put a hundred points in, but you wouldn't stay all day. Right? <laughs> you say, I did well to come on a cold day. Yes, you did. I appreciate you coming. But I believe God has a message for you. You came out on a cold day. I believe he's going to give you a hot message. You're going to leave with heartburn. <laughs> Amen? Because the word has a way of warming your heart and burning your heart. Now, let's look at number one. Look at number one. And listen to me closely on television. His words are spirit and life. The word of God is energy. It's energy. When you read God's word, there's a life that comes into you that is energy. It is the spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you, they are what? Spirit and life. There have been times I've been so exhausted, you know, jet lag and all those kind of things, and even just read a chapter or some promises, and I could feel energy come into me. Frida Lindsay, I think, is one of the greatest examples of the word bringing life. Every year, she started, she and her husband started Christ for the Nations. I've known her forever. Every year she'd read through the Bible, and she'd always tell you, this is my 40th year, this is my 50th year. Well, she lived to 94, and she read through the Bible. I don't know how many times, probably 70 times. And she had energy to the end of her life. And she ministered to people. And if you were to ask her, where did you get this energy? You're 94 years old. She'd say the word. Because the word brings energy. And we get up in the morning sometimes and think, oh, yuck, another day. Or I'm so tired. This week has just depleted me of everything. But the word gives you energy. So put your hand on your heart. Say, I won't forget. The word. The word gives me energy. Now let's look at the second thing. And I just asked the Holy Spirit to help me with these. Well, let me tell you some more about energy. Oral Roberts died at 91. That's not shabby, right? Do you know he ministered to the end of his life? You say, where did he get the energy to? Sarah went out and did television with him out in California. I went out one time, did television. He had a study, and pastors and leaders came from all over the world once a week to the very end of his life. He would say to you, it's the Word and the Spirit. That gave me energy. Now, folks, if it'll work for them, will it work for you? Do you have to be a little weak, namby-pamby Christian? No, because if you get the Word and the Word gets in you, it gives you energy. The second thing, the Word cleanses. If you want to get your act cleaned up, read the Word. Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Oh, I had an example of this this week. It was so wonderful. And I thought, how many times have I read the Bible and thought, that's a bad attitude. Mm, that's not a good thing to be doing. Why do you think like that? Because that word washes you. It talks about the washing of the water of the word. So Jesus dwelt among us to show us how to live freely and abundantly according to his word. Today we have the living word to direct and guide us daily. Do you long for a deeper spiritual life? The Word has everything you need to succeed and achieve breakthrough in every area of your life. For a gift of $25 or more, you'll receive Maryland's CD teaching, The Place of Success. Discover how you can create a life of fulfillment through the Word of God. Use the power of the Word to cleanse your soul, create miracles in your life, and find healing for your body and emotions. You'll also receive God's promises for your every need wrapped in a lovely leather-bound cover. This powerful book is full of promises that will help you overcome life's challenges. This resource topically arranges specific scriptures to offer you hope and encouragement 
during difficult seasons. Discover the healing power that lies in the Word. Call or click today. Do you have some things in your life that seem small or insignificant or unimportant? We all do. We all have things and stuff we have to do, situations, and just little blips that seemingly go through our life and that are no big deal. But I want to talk to you about the power of a very important, important, important principle. I was thinking about this as it relates to Moses. Moses, when he was three months old, was in a very dangerous situation. He was about ready, you can read about this in in Exodus, he was about ready to be thrown into the Nile River. Pharaoh had asked, had required all the Jewish families to throw the little baby boys into the Nile River for the crocodiles to eat them because Pharaoh was threatened by the Jewish population. So little baby Moses, three months old, and it says he was cute, had, had a nice face, beautiful features. And he was about ready to be thrown into the Nile River. His mom just couldn't bring herself to do that. And this little man, small, and you don't know what his future is. You don't know what God's going to do or not do. This little guy, she makes a little reed of boat, the boat of reeds, pitch, puts pitch in it and puts him in this little boat and floats him in the Nile River along, along the bank. And Pharaoh's daughter finds Moses. And it's tremendous that she finds him, very much God's plan for this little man. And I say that for your life as well, because many of us, we have things that seem to be small, insignificant, and unimportant, but yet in God's hand, those things can turn into massive, massive blessings. That's what we have with saving Moses. Saving Moses looks and sees all these little people who are one, two, three, in very dire and urgent situations where the need is most urgent and the care is least available, This is the greatest potential for God to do something absolutely outrageous, and that's the blessing of potential. (laughs) 